Hi, welcome to Aussie Kicks. On today's show, well, it's just a quick one following on from my last video that I did on the teaser trailer for the XVO2 Pro. Well, we finally got a good in-depth look at the chassis as Tammy have just put out a video on it. So what was my taking? Well, I took a lot of screenshots of it and we'll go through it. There's things we kind of knew already and some nice little touches that we didn't know about. <laughs> so the first thing you see in the video that Tamiya put out, they actually put like a prototype test body like the car manufacturers do when they're testing out a vehicle they put on like little bits and pieces and paint it all funny black and and that kind of stuff and they did the same with a Yaris body so that was a nice little fun touch the next thing we could tell yes we finally got to see the cover the one that actually fits over the whole chassis and yes it slides down onto those ears attached to those is the wheel arch deflectors if you will whatever you want to call them and it very much kind of mirrors what we saw was coming out for the TTO2. This is really nice. The only thing that I'm a bit worried about is the servo is in a brilliant position and the servo is very easy to access, change, swap out. But the steering rod that moves forward from the servo leaves a massive gap in the front of the cover. Now going on the picture, I think you could probably trim that a little bit closer because obviously you're still going to get loads of muck flying in through that area but overall i think they did a great job on trying to cover everything it was good to see a anodized metal motor mount was in there and yes you get universal shafts but i couldn't tell if you only get them on the front i did see them on the front but i couldn't tell in the video whether you get them on the back or it's just dog bones on the back we'll just have to wait and see obviously the video is in japanese so there's probably loads of information in there that i just didn't get one aspect of the xvo1 that was a bit of a pain was accessing the diffs now they've definitely improved that on the xvo2 pro as they look very much along the sort of lines of a tto2 you can see the way that the top mounts of the chassis kind of resemble that just a little bit now we get to see in the kit you get turnbuckles so you can adjust your camber so that was really nice. The only thing I'm not too sold on is when you have that uh, attaching to the upright where the wheel attaches. If it pops off, your wheel just flaps around. And I have had issues with once you knock the wheel, it just pops that off. So it's kind of a nice, easy way to adjust your camber. But it is a little bit of a weak point if your ball, ball joints get a little bit loose. As for the battery, well, it's a bit of a contentious one. It's turned up on its side and pushed all the way to the side of the chassis. It's going to limit the kind of options available. Yes, you'll be able to get a 2S shaped like a Tamiya battery, so you could run it on 2S when you're running brushless. But apart from that sort of form factor, I don't see you being able to run much else. There is a little bit of adjustment in there that you could see from the chassis shots, but I think that's just to snug up the battery, not to actually give you much additional space to swap out to a square battery or something like that like i said before the servo is in a great position very easy to access maintain and swap out as well as adjust it's all straight from the top so you won't have any issues faffing around obviously this chassis is going to get quite a bit of hard work so the more easy it is to maintain it and uh, swap out bits and pieces and access the diffs the better really one thing that was nice to see is it's hex screws all around. This does feel a bit more premium. It's not one of their entry level kits for Tamiya. So the plastics, Tamiya really seem to have been pushing up the quality of their plastics. And now moving over to hex screws again is a lovely little extra. As well as seeing the metal uh, screw in hexes on the wheels, which was another extra little bump to make this kit a little bit more premium. As well as it comes with full bearings throughout. So we got a better look at the props, the front and rear one, and yes, they are aluminium. Couldn't tell if they're dog bones or if they are universal at each end. That I don't know. If they are dog bones, you probably will be able to upgrade to universal and that will be another option coming, but I couldn't see from the pictures. As for the underside, yeah, lovely and smooth, totally flat. And it was nice to see that they'd actually designed the front bumper and the rear protection to go over the bottom of the diff housing so that when you bottom out that car and all the rocks and gravel that hit those points, you could just swap out the front bumper and it won't actually damage the underside of the chassis at the diff houses. Now this chassis is super smooth across the bottom. So one thing that it definitely would be a good idea for something like skins, for instance, is to produce a stick-on 
a protector. You could do some fun things like you could have a, a, an image of the underside of a chassis with the exhaust and stuff like that just for a bit of fun or you can do some, some kind of random d designs like they do but I know they're looking at doing some more Tamiya stuff so hopefully maybe we'll see something for this down the line as it would be nice to be able to protect your chassis when you're out blasting around having fun with it that once you decide that you want to put it on the shelf and retire it or sell it on you could just change the bumper the rear guard pull off the decal and your chassis is lovely and clean again when you look at the actual arms you can see there is mounting points for anti-roll bars so there will be an optional kit to produce anti-roll bars for this i am sure one thing that's definitely improved is going to be the travel the size of the shocks are huge and you can really see these how long the out drives are so that when the arm flexes there's plenty of travel for the dog bone they look super long and i'm pretty sure this is going to have the biggest suspension travel of any road car tamir have ever produced so yes, there was confirmation that you're going to get 39 tooth front and rear to give you a 50-50, but you will have the option for the 40 teeth that you'd probably put in the front. Now, I'm no expert, but I looked into this a little bit more, and the idea is you put the 40 tooth at the front, so as you slide into the corner, once you start to apply, apply power, the front will pull that little bit more than the back, which will then keep the chassis more straight as you pull the way out of a corner under power. So personally, I've had a bit of a change of heart on this one. Now, I was going to get one on the show, but I've decided it's kind of one that I'm looking forward to myself personally. Now, the only negative aspect that I seem to be getting from you is that you are a big fan of having the motor over the front axle on the XVO1. And obviously, the XVO2 Pro has the mid motor position. So a lot of you are worried it's not going to give you the same road holding. But we'll just have to wait and see on that one. Now, Tamiya did do some actual driving footage, and I must admit the car did seem to drift quite quite nicely and get the tail out as you're going around corners so whether we're having that 42 foot at the front kind of helps we'll just have to wait and see but I am personally super excited so that's all we've got for you for now so thanks very much please like and subscribe and hit that bell notification 